Hello friends and greetings from Blue Lagoon, Iceland, that's where I am. I came here with tourists actually as a bus driver. <laughs> you know, I work in every capacity. I'm going to show you Blue Lagoon today. So the only way to get to Blue Lagoon if you have a reservation or if you're with a group of tourists like me. That's how I arrived here. And we're going to walk inside of Blue Lagoon and I will show you the current situation. This looks like a new pipe. It's some hot water supplier, I don't know, but it looks like it had been installed here recently. I don't know what it carries, to be honest. Uh, <clears throat> so, there's lots of people in the lagoon, really many. I even did a drone flight, two drone flights, and um, you know, I'll show you the area, all the new lava from above. So, um, see many buses. I came with a group of 18 people. Now, many people will say that it is very dangerous to be here right now. Yeah, in a way it's part a bit dangerous, but, you know, volcanic eruptions can be predicted in Iceland with a decent notice, you know. It doesn't happen like this, that the mountain is exploding all of a sudden, or the earth is breaking through all of a sudden without any earthquake or any notice, you know. You have earthquakes for some time ongoing before magma breaks through the surface like knock knocks on the door you know <laughs> and you you know that it's going to erupt before the hand so at the moment there are no earthquakes there are no indications that there would be eruption here so i feel safe to be here for now but of course there are some earthquakes start going on here then it's then it's a sign you know but you see Icelandic Met office was very accurate in protecting volcanic eruptions so far here they gave a good notice even during the last eruption, so... Uh, <clears throat> I do believe people have time to evacuate in case of something happens. At least a uh, few hours. That's why it's okay to be here for now. Uh, but of course it's a personal choice, you know. I'm dependent on my work, you know. I live off my work, so I need to come to work with tourists here and... I need to earn money. They, they sent me here, my employer, so I came here because of my work. I don't have much choice, so like, even me, even I, I am dependent on Blue Lagoon in terms of uh, my income, you see, because tourism is the biggest industry in Iceland, and I drive tourists, you know, and if tourists wish to go to Blue Lagoon, the company sends them there, you know, and I have to drive, so I actually, I'm actually scheduled for three trips to to Blue Lagoon this week, and we will see, no, actually maybe two or three, at least three, I think, three, not sure if all of them will go, because, because sometimes we don't have enough reservations, but as you see, there are really many people, and they all look happy. Now, I look at on the earthquakes maps today. Most of earthquakes that take place now is actually in Fagradal Shot, next to Fagradal Shot, close to Trail B. Like it's, they are lining with Trail B, close to Trail A. So it's, I think, it's more dangerous to be there than here. And. Well, in the realms of earthquakes, of course, along know this Sunnukagigur uh, fissure line where we had already three eruptions north of Grindavik. Uh, that's where we had, we have ongoing earthquakes there as well. So that's, that's where we are most likely to see eruption again, but unlikely here in Blue Lagoon, though. There is magma accumulating at very much depth, but it doesn't break here because Obviously, there is no passage for it to come to the surface here, but it has a way towards the east, you know. So, that's a brief explanation how it works, so that you wouldn't be concerned for me. And I'm here briefly, of course. I'm here only for two hours. We depart at 8 o'clock, and I will be gone. To get here, you need to drive now much longer way than before. The, uh, the Blue Lagoon Road had been flooded by the lava, you know. So it's extra 34 minutes to drive through Hapnir, through Hapnir Bridge between Cantonets 
it takes one hour and five minutes one hour and ten minutes to get to Reykjavik by the new road instead of 40 minutes 30 to 40 minutes before and so here we are we arrive at Indulagum see it's beautiful lake here Silica Lake uh, right next to Blue Lagoon. Let's take a look at this lake. It's smoking. So, uh, it's Blue Lagoon was full of people. I was looking from the drone, it was just fully packed with people. My bus had, had only one seat free. Uh, so, the lava overspilled there. There you see the hot pipe. This hot water pipe is there. See this passage? That's where the lava reached. Pretty close to Blue Lagoon, actually, like some one kilometer or something. One kilometer distance to, to Blue Lagoon from the lava. It's incredibly close. I was flying drone like from the parking lot to the highway where the lava spilled it over. It's one point. Uh, uh, eight kilometers and drone was showing the distance by straight line so he's not that far and from here it's actually even close and I think it's less than one kilometer uh, so I am waiting for my passengers here and Blue Lagoon employs 600 people you know, it's a nice job to work here, of course, if um, there is no danger. But you can even sit here and observe the people from the window, like through the glass. You see, like sometimes people come very close right next to you here, <laughs> drinking beer or something. And there you see people are changing towels outside. And, um, People come here from all over the world. We will go outside now and I will show you <coughs> because it's possible to to get outside and you see and then some glass uh, fans here and you can just uh, be here and look how people are enjoying here and there is a bar where people drink alcohol they buy drinks actually one drink is included uh, free of charge but if you wish to be to buy more then you have to to pay uh, extra so uh, it's already 6 uh, 40 right now so those 70 euro that you pay the cheapest ticket is 70 euro usually it's in the evenings um, it includes in, includes one alcohol drink and some silica masks and free towels lockers so it's uh, uh, it's not really just the basin some services included in the ticket and uh, this is how Blue Lagoon looks. It's, uh, it's kind of special water because it has a lot of dissolved minerals in it. It's, uh, it's a byproduct water from geothermal, geothermal power plant that you see uh, a bit further there behind. And there were just pools initially here, like wastewater from the plant. And one guy who was sick uh, with psorias, he was back in 1981, he wanted, his name was Valor. He wanted to, he got permission to base in those pools, he wanted to try if it helps against his psorias and he was the first one and it was him who named it, he was from Keplowik, it was him who named it this place in Blue Lagoon because, um, uh, I don't know, we look at Blue and he called it Blue Lagoon and that's how the name stick, to, stick through, 
uh, history. And you see, all the girls are working there, selling drinks inside. So, I have been here many times, uh, so I am not so excited to go in the water, but I can if I come with a group of people, they do allow me a free entry to Blue Lagoon, which uh, I will skip for today because I had to do drones and you know, filming for you guys, so I am good for today. The moon is already shining. So it's uh, sunset's pretty late today, and what right, we will explore better. You see, this water I can drink. Actually, I'll drink some. <coughs> so it's a restaurant. It's a lava restaurant. It's very famous in Iceland because of its chef. Its, its chef. Very good food, but very expensive, super expensive. If you don't, if you don't have enough money, like here on the budget, avoid it. <laughs> it's a robbery prices, really. Um, well, some things in Iceland do not cost that much. Like if you shop in Bonos, you know. It's like cafeteria. Uh, where they sell drinks here uh, but let's go upstairs and um, uh, we'll take a look at the shop also from Bali and I'll show you all the facilities here hopefully this place will last uh, for a long time so that people would have a place to work and I would have a job <laughs> Because, you know, for many years I have been driving people here, uh, being uh, employed first in nice travel and then in uh, in bus travel. This is a uh, cafeteria for workers, you know, workers of Blue Lagoon, they eat here. You see. Lots of Polish spoken here around uh, because unforgettable hosts. Blue Lagoon was an amazing experience. Yeah. Yeah, so we're just exploring the area. So uh, this room is for the drivers here. Uh, so that's where I stay if, if I, for guides. It's a 